it even hurts me to say we had the vehicle for probably 10 months. Okay. And I, Very I, short period in, of time. I did the swipe. I looked at the odometer and I saw 30,000 miles. And I was in like, 10 months. I'm like, where did my wife drive this thing to Jupiter? She drove 30 K miles in 10 months. Yes. Impressive. Right. So then I got spooked. Cause in my mind, I was like, I'm going to have to replace the battery in this thing real quick. Like you're already shaking your head for those listening. He's already saying, oh, nay, nay. But I did get spooked and it brings up the reality of this misperception or idea of the EV. You brought up depreciation and maybe it's going to depreciate faster, but that doesn't have anything to do with how long it lasts. That's the funny part, Michael. There's such a disconnect between residual values and longevity. The fact is we don't know how long these vehicles will be on the road. The only sizable data set that exists around this was really released by Tesla. In those reports, they released information about the broader Tesla Model S and X fleet that had crossed 200,000 miles, had retained 88% of its battery capacity. For Model 3 and Y, it was 85%. So if that's at 200,000 miles, the steepest end of the battery degradation curve is at the very beginning on the front end. These are probably half a million mile cars at least. Now that doesn't make it suck any less for the one person that's one out of 500 that had a high voltage battery pack failure. That's where warranty products are going to be really important. It's honestly like a massive F&I upside opportunity for any dealer that's participating in this. It's a legitimate fear because it's such an expensive failure, but the rate of failure is so far below the rate of failure for any combustion drivetrain. I don't think enough people realize that. And you definitely would have been fine.